Hi guys, today we are going to have a small tutorial on how to kind of model a high-rise building in Rhino and with the use of Grasshopper, how can you create floor plates and voids and then tabulate the areas for different levels as per the uses in an Excel sheet. So here we have a, a Rhino interface open with you. So what we need to do is I have these files here. So I have a Rhino file and a Grasshopper file associated with it. So I'll have to drag my Rhino file onto the Rhino canvas. Say open. And then type Grasshopper. And drag the Grasshopper file on the canvas of the Grasshopper. So there we have it. We have the two files opened. So this is a quick model that I've done in Grasshopper earlier. So I want to illustrate you the same process, how to do it. Now what we can see here in this viewport is uh, the site, which is the second site located at something is. And there's a creek behind this and all that. And this is the junction, these are the surrounding buildings. So I quickly model this in Rhino. So if you go to the top view, this is a building, this is a site. And don't worry about this, I'll explain you what, what is this now later. So if I open my grasshopper and let's say just hide the building, <clears throat> then this is how it is. So you have the side boundaries, I have offset it 5 meters here, 3 meters on all the other sides. And I have this levels created. So you have to note one thing that this levels have to be named in the same manner as I have named it because these layers are then actually connected with the grasshopper definition here. So if there is a change in the names, the program will not work. Okay. So they are put in the different levels. So for example, the lowermost level is plan 001. If I come to the flow plates level and if I just put off these layers, then I wouldn't be able to see the rest of it, but what is there on the ground floor. So on the ground floor, uh, we have some open space here. These are the offsets and this is my building. And I guess these layers are off. So once I put my subdivision layers on and sellable, non-sellable and voids, you get to see other lines. So basically, probably these are retails here. So these, are, these lines are all uh, under subdivisions layer. So which depicts the areas, different areas. And what you have is this color that you see here. This is basically, you can check it in the properties, but this is under non sellable So all that is services and circulation and your staircases will be under this. And this is this will have to be done as a loop like this. And the remaining areas are subdivisions. So this is all well organized that way. So essentially you will be having three different types of users. One is uh, public, you will have a service flow and then the guest rooms. So essentially I've created three layers here and three sub uh, and sub layers under each one of this. So flow plates will decide what is the outline of the flow plate. Subdivisions will subdivide that area into different users and then you have non cellular which is your passages and staircases, lifts and services and all that. And the voids, if there are any, so on the ground floor, there aren't any voids. Whereas, as you go on higher levels, you would have voids and other things. And then, uh, actually, this was done in Rhino. I used these tools, Polygon tools, and this one to quickly create these tools and then use offset function here to offset these. Right, you use a fillet option here to fillet this. Drawn this again using polyline here and then extruded it out. And there we have it. And these are all actually organized in layers. So if I see, if I remove the site, sorry, if I remove the plot, so all of the other lines goes off. If I remove the site, I think I'm sorry, if I remove the 3D context, the 3D context goes. These are not all that important uh, layers that, needs, that are connected to the grasshopper, but this one is certainly is set back. So this is very important. So I take you to the perspective window now. Let me just hide this. So what you can see in the perspective window is the plan drawn out and thereafter I have the setbacks. So basically if I put the setbacks layer on, all that you can see 
is nothing but all the offset lines that we had they extruded on top now they extruded in top in such a manner that they intersect each of the plane has to intersect with all others if there is a gap or a little void then there will be problem. so essentially uh, this is done to kind of contain a volume inside so once you have all this planes intersecting at different angles and stuff you have one at the bottom closing off and you have one at the top closing off so once you close all of these then whatever volume is there inside of this uh, uh, will decide the shape of your form so in other words the form will have like in this case there's an inclined plane and there's an inclined plane i guess somewhere else as well yeah here so how will the volume be calculated here will it be in this area that is between this and this or will it be in the central area so if i put the wireframe or mode on maybe you will understand so essentially this is how it is and everything that is contained within this on the inside let me just put the ghosted mode on okay i'll just show you one second so what let me just uh, go to my graphs of a definition and let me just turn the form that was formed from this planes just put the preview on and let me just put off these layers so now we can see here that was the inclined plane you had that was the inclined plane you had this was the straight surface that was the straight surface so the volume is contained within this and this is the ground flow area that you have right so essentially how you do it is first and foremost you have to you can use the same labeling for your layers same naming so and i am providing you with this file so this is all there except that uh, for your side you'll have to draw all of these things out and then put them in the subsequent layer so initially you will start drawing with the ground flow plan in the top flow top view and then putting each of these lines under each one of the subheads so once you do that then what you can do is so let me just put off the building mass again so this is your ground floor let's say i want to go to the first floor so you can either copy this one make a copy so you can say duplicate layer layer and object so it will duplicate we don't want to duplicate this side but it will duplicate all the offsets and other things and so and then you can rename it as plan 01 but you'll have to rename this as 010101 okay and then you'll have to change your lines so for example so let's assume that we have so let's assume we have created this and we have renamed this so we can put off this layer so the lines don't clutter so then what i've done is i've done some changes you have just drawn you know just drawn some lines so we are in the first level so probably this is the service floor level just drawn some rooms and there's a void here and all this is a circulation area so likewise if i go on top again this level and put this one off sorry go here and put this one off then you have the guest room levels so where you have all the guest rooms and the and the void here and this is the circulation area so this is organized you can even import your autocad files if they are ready and then just place them using any any of one points you can use a move tool and place them here when you import autocad files it will be scaled to ones to one only thing you will have to match the when you import it gives you a setting whether you want to match uh, meters to millimeters or what so you should say if you are working in rhino in many meters and if you have worked your autocad file on meters then it should be meters meters if here you are working in millimeters and if in autocad if you have worked in meters then it should be meters millimeters so you can and in autocad if you have organized very well in layers so you can even have this different layers the same layers and in autocad you organize your files into so once you import it the layers also will be imported here and then you can selectively turn off um, layers and let's say this is an autocad layer so if i just say select all then it will select sorry select objects so what it will do it will select all of the objects in that level and then you can once they are selected 
or let's say yeah once they select it you can then put it in the rhino layer so maybe they shouldn't be identical maybe your rhino layer should be named after this and autocad layer should be something different so that you can identify which are your autocad layers and this but essentially essentially the trick would be to move those objects one by one into these different categories in rhino layers so once you do that you'll have it everything organized now other thing that you need to know is you don't need to know all this program this has been worked out by me for your convenience all you need to know is just a few things you need to know this one so I can probably highlight this maybe I can just make it a group and give it some color So I'll just highlight whatever you need to work on. So this one, maybe this one, this one. This areas. This is already highlighted, so good. And maybe these, even this. Okay, so we are we are ready to go. So if you look at this definition, uh, there are basically three stories. So this is the public flow, which has what two stories here. The height of 4.5 and you have service story which is one story height of 3.3 and guest rooms seven stories of 3.3 so you need to actually i can put a group around that also some colors anyways you get the point so and then rest of it you don't have to worry maybe yeah really you don't have to worry about anything else so those are the number of stories your layers are properly connected with this fine these are the voids no this this voids are different so the actual voids are here this voids is basically this one so if you want to create any voids into the building so here i've created a pyramid so if you can see if i put my flow plates on So then what this one does is actually the building profile is straight because I have put this one here if you can see the building adapts to that so it creates a cutout there okay So and what you see here are the voids that were defined in the in the plan 002. So on the voids, we have these voids which were put under this, and it automatically cuts the voids inside of this. Now if you look at the front, if I put the <coughs> model on here, then because I had an inclined plane here and because I had an inclined plane at the back over here, a slight angle here. So the flow plates actually match up with that. So if you look at the setbacks, see this plane and see that plane, which I inclined. So this one and this one, this one. So, and you can change it at any level. So for example, if I want to just slightly change the angle of this, what I can do is go to rotate three, which is right click create the first point, select the first point, second point defines the axis, here you are defining the angle and just see how the flow plates will change, will adapt to this, you saw this, how it matched with this, so that's a nice thing, so only thing 
there was a problem with the void so I will just undo it no there was no problem with the voids I think the building mouse is on there so you can't see the voids so remember this you get the point so very simple to model you don't have to worry about anything except that you have to draw everything in layers and put them in layers properly organized and uh, sometimes you may get issues like this I'll just show you what problems you may get so for example the number of stories are more They may get issues like this you may wonder why this is happening yeah so this is either because if you go to setbacks it's actually your topmost plane is here so it should not have gone beyond it but sometimes it is because of the number of layers that you need to control here because probably the building doesn't the building mass doesn't go on top if you look at this the building mass stops below this plane so there won't be anything that will happen. Everything that would happen would be below this mass. And what happens below that mass is, I think stories below 10, which is I think even 9, you'll have a problem. See? So you need to control this. So with probably 8. So 8 plus 1 plus 2. So it's 11. Again, you may have a problem. No, it works. But what we want is basically... 7 plus 3 so we'll do this at 7 okay so we have this so all you need to know is are these things here this one puts it on and this one is actually connected with this void here so this void is over here voids and if you go to this layer there's this voids layer so this one resides under that and that is connected with this layer and then this one is connected this one is intersected so your building mass the total building mass is intersected with this so you have a cutout there so you have a cutout happening there and then this one is connected over here so another thing is there's a form here of some kind i'll just show you so for example if there's a form of some sort like this and that is programmed in that is connected to grasshopper again so you have the form here but in order for it to take effect i think it's already connected here so only issue is this one won't be connected because this one is unioned with this cylinder here what will connect to this one would be this so let me just connect this one with this and if i put the form layer off then you can see something quite very interesting so you have the curves of the cylinders happening on two sides so these were the boundaries and this did not quite fall inside of the cylinder i guess so but you still have the inclined lines here here this one is not affecting it is because this is way ahead so probably if i move this little bit ahead so let me just move it not able to move it so if i move it it will affect it quite much but just do it in the top view so that it's affecting it anyway so you get the point so let's just put this one off so you can model your building based on different parameters not only based on the planes you can have a, a form here you can have a void and you can have a lot of things so let's just put all of these off and we don't want the form to take effect so the form should not be connected to this we want this one to be connected to this and let's put out the form layer so perfect so what you need i'll just tell you what you need to know inside of this <coughs> most importantly Are basically these things you need to come back and forth to this one this is your overall building form based on the setback planes 
this is if you want to connect it to the void if any and this is if you want to connect it to any other forms if any if so then this member will be connected to this one let me highlight this one also for you give some color okay and then this one needs to be turned off and on as per your wishes so this is this is what creates the flow plates including creating voids and all this is very important and all of that thing all of this data is connected to via very intensive grasshopper definitions to your layer so if you come back to here now this is a site area so basically you require to have a site which is a loop again it should be put in the site site layer fine and that gets connected and it gives you an area of that it shows you building footprint so in this case the building footprint it will take the largest overhang and it will merge all the flow plates on the ground and it will calculate the largest flow plate so this is a building flow plate coverage is basically side divided by the building footprint so that's calculated maximum height calculated this one is very close to what you all are doing in your hotel project again close to 35 a number of levels you have you have the total built up area total built up area total built up area for public total built up area for services for cash total far and net sale basically this one is your net saleable area which is minus all the services and circulations and then you have the efficiency which in this case is very low because i think we have a lot of passages or a lot of voice or a lot of service areas so we need to reduce on that so that can be fine too so your goal should be to increase this to close to 70 or 80 percent this is all organized in this layers like this and there is a button here finally where if you press this is basically to generate your excel sheet out of this area so if you just double click on this so what it will do is now as of now this one okay let me just change the so I'll just change the path for this you can double click in this and change the path and again generate this now I'll have a file under this which is here and if I open this file see it has calculated all the areas for you public areas on the ground flow heights service flow all the gas and cell net saleable area that this one is minus the circulation services and the voids these are your efficiencies so now based on this you can make important decisions like <clears throat> can you think the efficiency is too low then what you need to do is you need to work on the circulations and the voids so what you can do is let to let's put off the flow plates and let's go to each flow so zero 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 won't have any voids so no problem okay let's go to the public flows level which is your sorry the guest flow level and we have it on already the layers are all off perfect can put the void off and then go to the top view and see here see the amount of circulation that i have here. that's basically because because there is an inclined plane here and inclined plane here but you can decide if the inclined planes doesn't help you then might as well remove them so you can always come here and remove this inclined planes if, if i remove this inclined plane then this one will take effect so if you have the part of the inclined plane would be that if you have guest rooms the guest rooms would continue up to this level but because of the inclined plane they would be cut out so you may not want to do that with the guest room so you may want to you have to decide how you want to do it so that is one thing and um, so you can customize this if you remove this one the block will extend up to here if you remove this one the block will extend up to here so that flexibility is, is there and you can add any other shapes if you want a step kind of a profile you can create a step profile in rhino and you can place it over this so a lot of interesting things can be done 
So as of now, I'll just put this one off, go to the top view. And I can actually reduce on this. So what I can do is I can just hold on this. And put the control points on and you can just move these points way down like this. And I want you to pay attention to the areas. So we are talking about public flows. You can pay attention to here. So as I'm changing this, just see what happens. Saleable area increases. I take this one ahead further increases. Saleable area increases means the circulation gets reduced and also the efficiencies will increase. If you see here, the efficiency is increasing quite a bit. So that's how we will have to work with this. So that's about layers. Sometimes you may have issues like, uh, let me show you. have issues like let me just show you one second the top blue and let's just assume you have a void here and I'm scaling it to the so you have a void going out of the flow plates then you will certainly have a problem the voids won't be cut that is when you have to know that the voids are going outside of the bounds of this you'll have to take the control points or scale that inside that that is one thing and second thing is the setbacks are on for example let me just show you something we'll just take one of the planes or one of these planes and again scale it down to the scale one two and this one let's say this one goes inside like so if i put this one off it still works so maybe what I should do is uh, take this one instead and scale it. Scale it like so. So now it will not work because the boundaries are not closed here. So it's very essential if you look very carefully to the setbacks. So just put this one off. You don't have anything. So very often you may get something like this. You need to realize that the planes are not joining, there are open gaps here. So, so see if you look at this, everything is crossing each other, even the top plane. Even if the top plane goes little above, let's say, like this, you won't get it. So, you have to be very careful in intersecting these planes because they decide how the volume is formed. So essentially that's it and uh, what is nice about this again is if you go to view and say your remote control is on already which would be seen in Rhino bar here. So I have the public flows, number of flows, public height, guess number of flows, guess height and I need to add few more. I need to add, so there is a new group here which Okay, so what I need to do here is let me just maximize this and let me move this one off. So I have this one and I have this one. <coughs> so basically, what I need also is a service flow. So let's just put service flow, which is here. So number of so we need to just click on this and just say publish to remote and this one will be put here and I can just rename it sorry I can just rename this as service flow okay so here you can control how many number of service stories so similar to this you can control it here 
it's a number of guest flows and that's about it so this is to toggle so if you don't want to publish excel file just remove this so you just have to come out of this put it off at all times because otherwise it will keep on generating files so all this you get to see your coverage cross flow area all that what i had done here is i had gone to the edit mode created a new folder rename that folder and so we have a folder here let's say and i want to create a flow radial issue under that so i would go here the grasshopper flow radial issue okay flow radial total so i just have to select this and just say publish to bring your test so i'll get to see the same area here so when you do any changes to your Rhino file or plans for increasing the efficiencies, reducing in circulation, all that will be affected here. And this becomes you can this one you can dock this one into your panels here. There you go. So that's a quick tutorial on how to quickly form find your building using the setbacks and inclined planes or whatever shapes extra shapes that you had here the pyramid and the cylinder and then program them in grasshopper and get quick areas for different levels so these are the 4.5 meters two levels of public this is a service flow so if i change the service flow height for example increase this to six meters then that would be reflected here so this is the service flow and rest all of them are guest flows so i think that's pretty much about it if there are any questions or queries please post them on this youtube channel thank you very much